Will Russia go to war with Ukraine? All week, you've heard numerous answers to this question. In Ukraine, 71% of the people believe their country is already at war with Russia. This is a complex crisis, and all the answers are hidden in history. Did you know there was a time when Kiev was more powerful than Moscow? There was also a time when Ukraine and America were adversaries. Tonight, we'll bring you all these stories. We will tell you why Russian President Vladimir Putin is obsessed with Ukraine. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay, and this is Gravitas Plus. We begin in the 9th century. There was a state called Kievian Rus. This is where it was located. The Slavic people lived here. The city of Kiev was their capital. Between 980 and 1015, the Kievian Rus was ruled by Grand Prince Volodymyr. In Russian, his name is Vladimir. In Ukrainian, Volodymyr. And as fate would have it, these are also the names of the presidents of these two countries today. Anyway, Russians, Ukrainians and Belarusians draw their lineage from this Slavic state. A lot changed in the centuries that followed and for a lot of it, Ukraine was under Russian rule. In the 1900s, the two were Soviet republics. Russia, the most powerful of the 15 republics and Ukraine, the second most powerful. It had defense industries, large agricultural lands, and housed much of the Soviet nuclear arsenal. During the Cold War, Ukraine was the arch rival of the United States. The Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. Ukraine became independent, as did Russia. Ukraine inherited much of Soviet nuclear arsenal, but gave it up to Russia in 1994. In exchange, Moscow guaranteed Ukraine's security and promised to respect its sovereignty. They signed the Budapest Memorandum along with these countries. Cut to November 2013, Viktor Yanukovych was the president of Ukraine. He had a reputation for heavy-handedness, corruption, and above all, for being openly pro-Moscow. In 2013, he rejected an EU trade deal. This deal could have meant greater integration with the European Union. Instead, Yanukovych decided to take a $15 billion bailout from Russia. To many Ukrainians, it felt like being sold to Moscow. So protests broke out. They were called Euro Maidan. Euro because these protests were about Europe and Maidan because they happened in Kiev's Maidan. What we today know as the Independent Square. Here protesters chanted, sign the EU deal, Yanukovych must step down. Russia supported the president, the West supported the protesters. In February 2014, Yanukovych's government was toppled. The president was driven out of Ukraine. He fled to Russia. Not every Ukrainian was happy with this. Many in the Russian-speaking East wanted Yanukovych to stay. When he was driven out, the minority felt disenfranchised. On the other side of the border, Russia was angry it had lost its puppet. To salvage the situation, Moscow annexed Crimea. Why Crimea? Well, let's now zoom into this part of the world. Crimea is a peninsula. It is located in the Black Sea. In 1954, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev transferred Crimea. It was given to the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic from the Russian Soviet Socialist Republic. Why? Khrushchev hoped the transfer would strengthen, quote-unquote, brotherly ties between the Ukrainian and Russian people. Both Russia and Crimea were part of the Soviet Union. So this transfer did not mean very much. When Ukraine became independent in 1991, Crimea joined it. The peninsula was given special autonomy. It remained home to Russian military bases. Moscow promised to respect Crimean autonomy. Many in Russia were of the opinion that Crimea should not have been allowed to join Ukraine. In 2014, when Yanukovych was ousted from power in Ukraine, Russian military began seizing government buildings in Crimea. Soon the entire peninsula was under military occupation. A referendum followed. On the 16th of March 2014, Crimeans voted to become a part of Russia. Was this vote legitimate? Well, it depends on who you ask. For Putin, this was Crimea's liberation. For the rest of the world, this was Crimea's annexation. The focus then shifted to eastern Ukraine, where Russia-backed separatists had seized territory. Ukrainian forces did not launch an all-out offensive at first, but on the 17th of July 2014, when a flight carrying 298 people was shot down by these rebels, Ukrainian forces decided to flush out the rebels. The separatists began losing ground, so the Russian army stepped in. They invaded eastern Ukraine and fought alongside the rebels. What followed? was a series of talks between Russia, Ukraine and the West. They resulted in the Minsk Accords. 
This was first signed in 2014. Both sides agreed on ceasefire and military withdrawal. Ukraine agreed to hold elections in the rebel-held areas. Eight years on, the Minsk Accords remain unimplemented. Ukraine stands as the largest European country excluding Russia. It covers an area of more than 600,000 square kilometers with a population of 44 million and a GDP of more than $155 billion. Per capita income, more than $3,700. Today, Ukraine is divided between East and West in more ways than one. The West sees itself as more European. The East is closer to Russia, be it in terms of geography or sentiment. In the West, most Ukrainians speak Ukrainian. In the East, a third are native Russians. In the West, Russia is looked at with suspicion. In the East, Russia is looked at through the lens of shared history and heritage. Ukraine also remains at war. Its forces are fighting the rebels in the East. Rebel leaders are ruling at least two regions, Donetsk and Luhansk. Together, they're known as the Donbass region. Russia has once again sent its troops. This time, they're stationed right at the border. What does Vladimir Putin want? For NATO to stop expanding, NATO stands for North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It's a military alliance. These countries are the founding members of NATO. These countries joined it during the Cold War, and these countries joined after it. Ukraine wants to join NATO too, but Putin wants NATO to exclude Ukraine and every former Soviet state. And this is just half the story. Like I said, a lot is hidden in history. For starters, there is domestic politics. When Putin annexed Crimea, his approval rating skyrocketed. Keeping the nationalistic drum rolling helps the Russian president. Annexing parts of Ukraine also helps Putin restore Russia's superpower image. Again, back to history. Many Russians view Ukraine's independence as a mistake. It is true that Ukraine was ruled by Russia. In fact, Ukraine has barely remained independent pre-1991. There was a brief period before World War I and then another stint in 1600. For the rest of its modern history, Ukraine was under Russia. One in six Ukrainians is an ethnic Russian. One in three speaks Russian as a native language. So Putin is right when he says historically they were one. But claiming Ukraine on the basis of colonial history is wrong. It will be like Britain claiming India or South Africa or Spain claiming the Philippines. Past imperialism cannot justify present-day expansionism. Here's what else history tells us. Ukraine was forcefully Russified. Cut to 1700, Russian leader Catherine the Great started Russifying Ukraine. Ethnic Russians were shipped to this part of the world. Schools were told to teach Russian language. By 1800, the Ukrainian language was banned. In 1930, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin steered a famine in Ukraine. Millions of Eastern Ukrainians were killed. The area was then repopulated with ethnic Russians. In the 1940s, the ethnic Tatars were relocated. They too were replaced with Russians. There is a reason why Eastern Ukraine today has so many native Russian speakers. It was designed to be that way. Eastern Ukraine was always dear to Russia. It has coal, it has iron, fertile land. Its historical connection with Russia was forced. Putin time and again talks about the Holy Rus. He says Russians and Ukrainians are one people. 70% Ukrainians reject this thought. 72% consider Russia a hostile state. Today, 33.3% Ukrainians are ready to take up arms against Russia. 21.7% are ready to stage a civil resistance against Russia. 67% Ukrainians want to join the EU. 59% want to join the NATO. Meet the current Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky. He came to power in 2019 following a landslide victory. He is a vocal critic of Russia. Zelensky openly opposes Russian occupation of eastern Ukraine. 73% of Ukrainian voters voted this man to power. Today, Volodymyr Zelensky represents the pulse of Ukraine, the Ukraine that wants to remain independent of Russia. But Vladimir Putin wants to become the man who revived Russian imperialism. He does not realize the world has moved on.